Hi, how are you doing? This is Paul and in this video I'll be taking you through the getting started with PyCharm. This video is for those who are interested in taking part in the Python Level 1 course. The Python Level 1 course is a hands-on instructor-led course which allows you to develop a strong foundation in Python so that you can move on to the next level and be able to work with ease and have a strong and clear understanding of the foundations of Python. The reason why I designed this course was because my observation is that there are many courses out there online available, you know, where the authors give you everything. And you see three hour, four hour, five hour videos, which have everything you need to know about Python, but you can't absorb all that material in, at, at one go. And obviously a video is not a great way to keep track of where your progress is. So if you have a three hour video and you've watched one hour of that video, how do you go back to exactly where you, you know, want to continue from? While learning it in levels, one level at a time, I think is the most powerful way for you to develop a strong foundation. The other thing that I have, I'll tell you about this course is that it is stretched over a period of seven weeks learning. So in those seven weeks, you're building one layer at a time, you're working through problems. So I, I, I encourage you to sign up for the course if you're interested. Um, there are the space for 20 students um, at every session and these 20 students have access to tutoring. Um, so sign up and we're going to do this together. So in this video, we're talking about PyCharm and PyCharm is what we'll be using throughout the course. Now, um, what's the structure of this video? Well, in this video, I'm going to be telling you, I'll introduce what PyCharm is, where do you get PyCharm, how to install PyCharm, uh, how do you get started with PyCharm, and I'm going to give you a quick tour of PyCharm. I'll also be discussing some alternatives to PyCharm, which are okay, but I mean, I wouldn't recommend that you use them, given that in this class, we shall be using PyCharm. So let's get started. What is PyCharm? Well, PyCharm is, in my opinion, the most powerful dedicated IDE. What's an IDE? An IDE, Integrated Development Environment, is an application that allows you to do all the activities related to writing software, um, which is what development is. And what that entails is not just writing the actual code, but you could also run the code it also presents a code in a way that it's easy for you to distinguish between the various uh, parts of the code. So there are things called keywords, and then there are the functions and classes and variables and different types. Um, and PyCharm supports a lot of features out of the box. Um, and it's really rich way of developing not just Python, but also with other programming languages that work alongside Python or with other frameworks. It's feature rich. There are so many features that I love about it. Um, and these are some of the things we shall look at as we go through the course. There are also innovative features such as Code With Me that have not come across anywhere else. Um, and it's a wonderful way that you can share um, your screen. You can do live pair programming or multi-programming with multiple individuals. PyCharm is available as a professional or a community version. The professional version, uh, you'd have to pay a fee for that. Um, and when you pay for that, you get one year of updates. When you stop paying for that, you remain on the last update, what's called the fallback. The community version is good enough. Um, one thing to keep in mind about the professional is your first year is quite expensive and then it kept, keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. And eventually it gets to a point where it doesn't, doesn't go up anymore. I would, well, it just stabilizes. So for example, I pay about 49 pounds per year to get the professional version because I've been using it now for over maybe four years. The community version is good enough. There is no point of you paying for a professional version if you're just getting started. Once you are serious about Python, yes, then it's sensible for you to then pay for a professional version and get the, the full version. Okay, where do we get Py PyCharm? Well, if you want to get PyCharm, then you need to, um, you, you need to go to their website and I have already downloaded it here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to show you how to get that. So, um, to get PyCharm, the name of the, the website is JetBrains. That's the name of the company. I can just search on Py, PyCharm. And that will take you to that website. 
and then you can download it so when you click on the download button that's going to give you the options of choosing whether you want the professional version or the community version um, as I said just go with the community version for now there's no point of getting the more expensive one I mean you could find out how much it is there's a free trial if you want to try that out and I think it falls back on the community version in, in the event that you don't get the license but you click on the download and it's going to download now I already have it installed so um, there's no point for me to install here okay so I'll just cancel that so <clears throat> so that's how you get PyCharm now once you have PyCharm installing it is quite straightforward and you follow the instructions for your operating system um, so in the case of Mac you're going to um, like I, I have it downloaded somewhere but you will just run the instructions according to what they said um, they have instructions they have installation instructions available so you could click on that and they'll tell you for the different platforms how to install it so if you're installing it on in my case I think they assume that I'm on or they say here Windows Mac OS or Linux which is one of the really good things about PyCharm a lot of software applications are not available for Linux if you're if you're using Linux um, okay so that's getting it installed and once you install it you run it depending on your environment so if you're on Mac you double click on the icon if you're on Windows again double click on the icon I really don't know how it works on Linux if you know you could leave in the comments below and you could tell us how that actually works okay so you have installed PyCharm so let's get started with PyCharm so I have PyCharm open here let me just minimize this window So I have PyCharm open here. So this is what you'll see the first time you open PyCharm. It'll tell you welcome to PyCharm. It'll give you three options. You could create a new project. You could open an existing project. If this is your first time installing, obviously you don't have any project. Or you could get from VCS. Now what that means, VCS is version control system. There are various kinds of version control system. In this course, we'll be using Git and GitHub. Um, so if you want to clone, so that's the word used to get software from a repository. A repository is where someone would store their software on GitHub. Um, if you could, you, you could click this and this will clone it and create a project for you. Um, but since we are completely new to this, we're going to click new project. Now there are other options there. You could customize PyCharm, um, but you'll change how it looks, the font. Uh, you could change your key map that is the shortcuts that you use um, or the kind of keyboard that you use you could install plugins um, you could learn PyCharm so I've never done this I, I think I've just learned it in the course of using it but if you have time you could click on that and find out more about that but let's go straight to starting with PyCharm so I'm going to click on this new project and it's going to open up this window now, what it's going to give you is a number of options there. First of all, it will have a default location for where it will store your projects. So this is typically um, inside your home directory. It'll create a folder called PyCharm projects. And that's where it's going to put your project. So in this case, the default name, it's going to start off with Python project, provided it doesn't find anything with that name. If it does, it'll probably give you Python project one or two. I, I don't know what that, what it'll do there. But give your project a sensible name. Now, the next section here specifies what's called a virtual environment. A virtual environment is a way for you to run Python isolated from your system Python. Now, when you install Python the first time, you will install it, you'll install it as system Python. So that means your whole um, computer has access from anywhere, from anywhere you run uh, any program. If it's on the path, the execution path, then you will be using the system Python by default. What are, and, and so the problem with, with working with the system Python is anytime you install um, a package from the Python um, packaging index, you, it'll be available to all applications, that's good, but it means you cannot tailor that installation to a specific application. So for example, if you have a package version one, and then you need to install something else that needs the same package version 2, then 
you you'll end up with conflicts if you have different applications that have different version dependencies. So a virtual environment allows you to create sort of like a box where you can have a separate Python and this separate Python can have just what is needed within that environment. So there are three types of virtual environment that are available out of the box. Um, so there's virtual env, pip env, and conda. Uh, pip env is a newer type of using virtual env, um, which it has a number of nice features about it. Virtual env has been available for a while, but it's also built into Python. So from version three of Python, they now support um, virtual environments natively. Then there's Conda, which is not restricted to Python applications. You can install a wide variety of applications, um, different programming languages, different programming frameworks. Um, and this is a very nice way of not just having a virtual environment for Python, but having a virtual environment that can run any application. So for this course, we shall just focus on using virtual env. We will try and stick to default options as much as possible so that anyone who gets lost can quickly recreate a virtual environment or their project environment to, to make progress. As I said, the focus on this course is for you to learn Python and therefore we don't want to waste time on a lot of other useless things. So where will this virtual environment be placed? It will be placed inside a hidden folder called dot virtual ends and it will be using your base interpre interpreter for python 3.9 now we don't want to inherit um, access to the global packages so you leave that unchecked but you could make this available we don't have to if you had a previous uh, or a different interpreter you could point to it here uh, by default pycharm will ask you to create a main.py well welcome script for you which is fine because this is a good way to see what a Python script looks like. Uh, at the moment, I have a warning telling me that the environment location is not empty. Um, so that means there was already, I had already created a, an, a, um, a virtual environment at this location. So I could change the location so I could click here and I could create a virtual environment inside um, inside the project that's okay so I'm going to come here uh, PyCharm project and I look for so this is where we're going to create it so that hasn't been created yet um, just say two that's fine okay but if you do this for the first time you will, you're not going to encounter that uh, I should have cleaned that up anyway okay so and I say create and it goes through the process of creating your virtual environment. Typically, there'll be a tip of the day. I don't like usually seeing these tips of the day. I mean, if you want to learn more about PyCharm, it's great to leave that unchecked. Um, so we close that. Okay, there we go. So now we have PyCharm loaded. Um, let me just make this bigger. Okay, so there are several things we see here. First of all, we have the main editor window. And the main editor window, we have a simple Python script called main.py. Notice that the words are colored differently. So this is what syntax highlighting is. Um, at the moment, the syntax highlighting is, if you look at where my mouse is at the bottom here, it's Python 3.9 uh, is what it recognizes. What we have here is then the project window. In the project window, you see your source code, the folder or the project name, and all the scripts that are inside. And then you have this thing here called external libraries, which is the virtual environment. And this virtual environment has a number of things. So it gives you the name of the virtual environment. In this case, I call it Python Project 2. And the most important package here is this site packages. That's where anything you install will go to. On the top right here, we have, first of all, we have here, this is the code with me uh, button. So this allows you to run that code with me and work with someone else um, live. And then we have these run configurations or run or debug configurations. At the moment, it's set to main, and this is what it does for you by default. 
um, you could click that to edit the configuration. So I just leave it as it is for now. And this is a run button, and this is a debug button. Now, the reason why we have this red dot here is so that if we run this with a, in debug mode, it's going to, the interpreter will halt at this line. You can also search uh, for classes, files, symbols, or actions. Um, and you can modify configurations here. So you can check your preferences, install plugins, change your theme, modify your key map, uh, view the mode in which you're, you're operating. Um, at the bottom, we have a number of panels here. So the to-do lists to-dos. Um, and to-dos are usually, you can, if you write uh, a comment and you put the word to do something, it shows up in your to-do. So this is a way to keep track of things that you need to do in your code. Uh, it's a really nice feature for you to remind yourself of things that need to be done. If there are any problems with your code, they'll be highlighted here. At the moment, this green tick means there are no problems found with my code. Um, you could open a terminal here, and this terminal is, I think it's a bash terminal regardless of what um, operating system you're using. And this is a beautiful thing because it allows you to then enjoy the bash terminal from with, even within Windows, provided you're running Windows 10. Um, Python packages shows you all the Python packages that you have installed. Since this is a fresh install, there is nothing except setup tools and pip. Pip is used for the installation. We'll look at that in later videos. And then you have the Python console, which is, it comes with Python. So this is, if you type Python on the command line, you're going to launch the console. And this is basically a way for you to have access to that. You can keep track of variables here, any variables that are part of that, your Python console. Um, so for example, if you write X, which is a string, that's going to appear there. Now you have that string shown. So uh, there's an event log here at the bottom, uh, which shows you various events. For example, if you push to the version control system, it's going to show you that you've pushed successfully. If you have updates, it'll show you that there are updates. So this is just a way for you to get notifications. Other than that, you are ready to get going. If you've gotten this far, then your PyCharm is installed and you are good to go. So I look forward to, um, for us to taking this course together. I'm going to upload more videos. This is the first video. Um, I'm also going to upload one on installing Python in case you don't have Python installed. And then I'll also upload a video on getting started with Git. So um, thank you very much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you at the course and take care. Bye.